Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and it's that time again. It's drone time and it's eight months on from my original review of the Mini 2. Now is this drone still worth your time? We've had a lot of other drones released since then and should you care about the Mini 2? Should you hold out and see what else comes out? Or is the Mini 2 your go-to drone for something portable and capable? Now, like I said, it's been eight months since I originally checked out the Mini 2. There haven't been any major updates. So with other DJI drones, they'll add brand new features, all these new exciting things after a product has been released. And recently that hasn't really been the case with DJI drones. They release the product, you may get like a tiny tweak, a tiny update and something small, but not so much with the Mini 2. Now, seeing as it's been eight months since this drone came out, have there been any major updates? Have there been any exciting new features added to the drone? Not really, no. And that's okay, but I mean, I was used to DJI when they would drop a drone and then a month later you'd have a new feature, a couple of months later you'd have another new feature. And that was the exciting part. I love that aftermarket care. But for whatever reason, DJI seem to be releasing a drone and it's almost fully finished, which is great as well. There's positives to that, but there's also that excitement of owning a product and getting a brand new update with added features. That hasn't really been the case with the Mini 2. There have been a few tiny upgrades, but nothing major since the original release. Now this guy here is the original Mavic Mini. I know, it looks the same. Oh, it, it pretty much is the same. It's almost like they released this guy, it had software limitations, then they released this guy, and they removed those limitations. If you look at everything, the build quality, the camera, the sensors on it, everything about it, it is almost identical. They've clearly put limitations on this, waited, and then released this drone and made it 4K capable. It really does feel like that's the case, which is a little bit disappointing for the people that originally bought this, and then they released this with the 4K capable camera. That's really frustrating for people who didn't wait for the Mini 2, and it only took, I think it was a year or so, until they released the Mini 2. So for people who had this drone and absolutely loved it, they then released the exact same drone, almost identical in every single capacity, every single feature of it, the build quality, the sensors, like I said, the camera is even clearly the same camera. It's pretty much the same drone, but this one has 4K and it has a little light on the front that you can change. That's weird to me, I don't know why they did that, but I mean, you know, if you don't own a mini drone, let's say that you own the original Mavic Pro or maybe the Mavic Air or the Mavic Air 2, then the Mini 2 could be ideal for your collection because this thing is so tiny, you can fly through little gaps, you can capture super unique footage that you wouldn't be able to capture from a larger drone. It really is a portable drone, like at its core. This is such a small drone. Look at it when it's folded up. Like this thing is tiny. It's smaller than most phones. This thing can fit in your pocket and that, to me still blows my mind. The fact that we can have a 4K drone that can fit in my pocket, that's exciting as. The one major change though was that they introduced the newer controller design. So this controller here has the built-in antennas. You don't have to flip them out like on the original Mavic Mini where you physically had to flip out the antennas like that. The Mini 2 had the built-in antennas on the back. It has a a nicer controller in my opinion. I love the build quality of this. It feels perfect. It's a really nice size. And the fact that I can lift that up and fit in my phone with the case on is massive. The original controller for the Mavic Mini, you could not fit a drone with a case. You literally would have to remove your phone from its case and slot it in. Not major for most people. Most people don't care. It's like five seconds of your time, but it does make a big difference if you're trying to get a shot and it also just actually protects the drone, you know? Not the drone, but the phone. The drone's got nothing to do with this. This is the controller. But if you wanna protect your phone and keep it in the case, it's a nice touch that you can keep it in the case 
while using this newer design. The other major difference is that this controller has a 10 kilometer range, so a significantly improved range over the original Mavic Mini. That was massive. That was such a big calling card. Besides the fact that this is a newer designed controller, I think the other major benefit is that it's using OcuSync. So you're getting an improved range out of it. You're getting up to 10 kilometers of video transmission. That's next level. So to be able to have a tiny portable 4K drone with 10K range using OcuSync, not Wi-Fi, which the original Mavic Mini had Wi-Fi, isn't the most responsive, it really isn't. Like when you're yawing, turning left and right, it is delayed because it's a Wi-Fi signal. It's not an instant transfer. I wanted to click, but I was mindful of the audio. So there's the click, guys. <laughs> but basically with Wi-Fi, as you turn, the um, response just isn't immediate. You're not getting it straight away. So with this, using the OcuSync, you're getting that immediate responsiveness. You're getting the improved range and the new controller. So I think that was the major upgrade for me. And for the people out there who had the original Mavic Mini, it really did make sense to sell the original Mavic Mini and then pay that little bit extra to get the Mini 2 for that additional range and that 4K video capability. That really did change the game for a portable drone that had really everything you needed in it. So now when we talk about battery life, this is the Mini 2 battery and this is the original Mavic Mini battery. Very similar, just a slightly different aesthetic, different color obviously, but the Mini 2 had a flight time of 31 minutes. Really impressive, like 31 minutes per battery. If you've got the Fly More combo with three batteries, that's close to an hour and a half of flight time. That's well and truly enough for each location. It really is enough. It's a phenomenal amount of flight time. And I think the Mini 2 had a slightly improved flight time over the original Mavic Mini. I believe it was only by like two minutes, one or two minutes from memory, but very similar batteries here, similar designs, nothing crazy different going on here. But I did actually find it very interesting that, for example, this is the original Mavic Mini, and that's the original Mavic Mini. This is the Mini 2, for example, and it will actually slot in, it will connect, and it will also power it as well. So you can use batteries from the original Mavic Mini in the Mini 2, and you can still use the new batteries as well. So that was a really nice touch. The fact they didn't significantly change it. So if you did own the original Mavic Mini, you could sell just the drone and one battery, keep two batteries, and then buy yourself just the Mini 2, not the Fly More, and you still have those three batteries. Now the only other difference when it comes to the aesthetic is these orange tips on the Mini 2. So that was the differentiating factor. It's got a slightly different wing tip to it, where the original had that gray, and the new one had the orange wing tips. Besides that though, like I said just before, pretty much identical in every other way. The other thing here is that they both weigh 249 grams, so you can even see it on the side there, 249 grams for both the Mini 2 and the Mini. Again, no difference, like everything, even the text on it, all the little grills on it, the sensors, the button, the placement of everything is identical. If they didn't have that different colored tip there, you would have no idea the difference. Well, obviously it says Mini 2 and Mavic Mini, but if those two things weren't there, if the wing tips were the same, and if you didn't have that text there, if that was covered up, you wouldn't know the difference. They feel the exact same, they weigh the exact same, everything is the exact same here. So to me, that was like the more disappointing thing. I think just seeing people in the community being so upset that they released a Mini 2 that shortly after the Mavic Mini and it had 4K and it had, you know, pretty much everything that the original Mavic Mini had, but it was clearly a software limitation. I think that's what annoyed people so much about it. You know, if we knew that that was coming, people would have waited. They wouldn't have got the Mavic Mini. They would have waited, spent that little bit of extra, got the 4K camera and the improved controller. You know, that's the most disappointing thing about it. And I think, you know, when I reflect on my experiences with the drone, I've been happy with the Mavic Mini. I loved it when I picked it up. It was revolutionary. It still is revolutionary for its size. It feels like a relatively cheap drone. Like the materials they've used are very plasticky. They're very lightweight. Obviously they're keeping it under 250 grams. It's a cheap feeling drone. And for DJI, that's quite uncommon. Like if you've used any of their other drones, their build quality is top notch. So to feel something that 
felt relatively, that was terrifying, I just dropped the drone. But, you know, I guess they're built to last, I hope. Who knows, it's probably broken next to me. Back to this, I guess the fact that I've used so many DJI drones and I felt the build quality of this and I could feel that it was cheap and light and weak. And, you know, it's not weak to the point that I can snap it, like I can put pressure on it. But for example, the back flap, that back door there feels really cheap. It feels like a cheap, cheap drone in that regard. You can also look at certain things like this little foam kind of insert here that covers up the cable. Like they've clearly made it the cheapest production they could and that's completely fine because they're keeping it under that weight. But I guess it is something that is light and cheap. And with that being said, it doesn't handle the wind extremely well. Like it does a great job most of the time. I've had no issues with it, but I have had a few issues when there's a relatively strong wind and I'm trying to fly back, it doesn't cut through the wind as well as I'd want it to. So with a drone of this size and this weight, I actually am really careful of when I fly it and when I take it far away from me. So if I'm taking it, let's say 400, 500 meters away from me, I, I don't feel comfortable because I know that this thing takes a while to come back. So I'm really aware of that and I make sure I've got well and truly enough time to fly back because there have been times I've been flying and even if I'm flying, you know, like the wind's coming on the side, for example, and I'm trying to fly back, it's not flying back fast at all. And I've got it in sports mode and it just doesn't come back fast enough. And it's because it just can't handle the wind as well. But they definitely improved it on the Mini 2. I don't know how they did that, but it has a slightly improved wind resistance to it. I have no idea how, whether the motors are more efficient, but it does definitely have a slightly improved performance in the wind when you look at the Mini 2 compared to the original Mavic Mini. When you look at the different intelligent flight modes on the Mini 2, it has a bunch of modes. So you've got Droney, you've got Helix, Rocket, Circle, and Boomerang. So alongside the photo options and the video options, you also have some intelligent flight modes. And then within the photo options, you have uh, panorama modes. So you've got the wide panorama, you've got 180 degree photos, which look really nice. And then you've got the sphere photos as well, which are kind of like those 360 degree photos that you can you know, almost take a photo and then when you've got it on your phone, you can move around and almost interact with that photo in uh, almost like an augmented reality, I guess, because you can actually physically move your phone and the photo will move with your body movement. So that's a really cool thing. It's, it's a little bit gimmicky and you know, I don't know how many people actually care about that, but it's nice that there's a bunch of features on the Mini 2. The camera on the Mini 2 is also extremely capable. You know, it's a 4K 30 FPS camera, it's a three axis gimbal, and it can capture 12 megapixel stills. It's got all of those different features and over a 30 minute flight time. So. Again, extremely capable and a nice complimentary drone. If you've already got another drone, this could be a fun smaller drone to get those nice tight shots through different gaps and to really play around with it. Like I see this as more of a fun experimental drone and it's still, like I said, extremely capable. The video quality is fantastic, but it's definitely more of a toy compared to the other higher end drones out there. When you look at the Mavic Mini camera though, it's pretty much identical. There's really no difference. The only difference is that it says 4K on the Mini 2, where this one says nothing on it. But besides that, it's the same size camera, same size sensor. It's a 12 megapixel sensor, the same three axis gimbal technology. Honestly, again, I know I keep repeating it, but there is no difference. It's clearly a software limitation. Um, and I think, you know, even the original Mavic Mini is extremely capable at 2.7K video. It's got that 12 megapixel again, so the photos are the same as the Mini 2. It's the same camera system. Um, but I think, you know, for those slight improvements, that slight uh, increase in quality, and definitely the improvement when it comes to the range and the controller, the Mini 2 does definitely stand out as an improvement over the original Mavic Mini. So I think it's kind of at that point where if you've owned a drone, if you've got yourself like a Mavic Pro or even like a, you know, I guess a Spark, for example, or maybe, you know, like a Mavic Air, then this could be a really nice upgrade. It's a fun tool to have in your kit. Like I said, really easy to get those nice tight shots. It's also extremely capable. It's portable, it can fit in your pocket and it's a fantastic drone. So I think the Mini 2 is really phenomenal for most people. If you wanna upgrade from the Mavic Mini, yeah, sell that thing and get this. 
Otherwise, if you have an older drone and you don't use it as much, and maybe you would find some more joy with something smaller that you could have more fun with, it's more kind of agile and you can fly through little interesting spots, put it in FPV mode, for example, then the Mini 2 might be the perfect complementary drone for you or the perfect upgrade. So I guess that's it. No major upgrade from the original Mavic Mini in terms of like the hardware of it. It's clearly the same thing. They've just obviously limited the software, but I think it's a really great drone and I've been impressed with the Mini 2 overall. It's a fantastic drone from DJI and it's innovative that they could create something that's under 250 grams that can shoot 4K video. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to have a fantastic day and peace out.